of your love Though the seasons change quickly You have always been enough Though the night make it darker Though the waiting seems long You have always been faithful To remind me of your love You are good In the morning I'll say you privilege to turn the service over to Sister Rose. Please welcome her as she comes. This morning we're so glad for everybody that's here for what God is doing now and will continue to do. We're grateful for his blessings. He knows how to bless us. I'm glad I'm under the blessing. Some people not, but I am. Yes. I thank God for all that he's doing and Boy, do we have chaos in this country. But I'm going to show you tonight 
If you're serving God, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. The scripture backs it up. God always takes care of his people. How is it that we can hear about these tornadoes and what have you go through a town and one house is left standing? How is that? How is it just lifted up and went over your house and left it there? All these things are saying to us that God knows how to take care of his people. Somebody's praying somewhere. Everybody ain't scared. Everybody ain't running down the street and scared you're going to get the virus. Come on here. Let me give you a few things here uh, this morning before I preach so I can tell you that all this stuff, God help us today. Help us today. What did I do with it? I had it here in my Bible. I'm probably can't find it. Yes. Listen to this. Let me put your mind at ease. Those of you that came today, I'm going to send you home feeling real good. Real good. The coronavirus versus the flu. Check this out. Approximately 286,932 people worldwide have this. You know how many people we got in the world? This is a, this is a small number. That's in the world, okay? 19,624 cases in the U.S. as of March 21st, 2020 has it, 19,000 in this country. The flu estimated 1 billion cases worldwide. 1 billion. Does this make sense? Something's wrong with this picture. 9.3 million to 45 million cases in the U.S. per year. What are, what are we running for? A billion cases worldwide with the flu. We don't even have no world. We don't even have a million yet. Listen. The deaths from the coronavirus, approximately 11,906 deaths reported worldwide. L listen to this. That's a small, small number. For us to create this type of fear and paranoia in this country is amazing to me. So, Okay, if it's 11,906 deaths reported worldwide for the coronavirus, 260 deaths in the U.S. 260. Are you kidding me? Am I supposed to be crawling under rocks and stuff? I don't think so. Listen. And that's on March 21st, we had 260 people dead. Do we value life? Yeah, but when you put it in comparison... What are we scared of? The flu, 291,000 to 646,000 deaths worldwide, 12,000 to 61,000 deaths in the U.S. per year. And we're running around here like, no, not we, they. <laughs> running around like a bunch of scared rats. I think it's, I think it's sad. Now, I want you to understand this. If I'm a Christian, if I'm living for God, if I'm doing the right thing, why would God send a virus to kill me? He said, if we being evil know how to do good things for our children, how much more so does God know how to do good things for us that love him? So God says, I'm going to send this down and I'm going to kill my people and y'all too. No, he's not. You might die. I'm not going to. They say, I'm one of the people that you better be very watchful of because, you know, you're the one that's, that's more than likely to get it. I'm 75 years old. I ain't getting jacked. No, I'm not. Are you kidding me? Gosh, if he took care of me for 75 years, why wouldn't he take care of me for the rest of the time? There's been flu and all kind of diseases and all type of things throughout the country, and God has kept me healthy and strong. I am healthy today. Yes. I'm trying to understand if we know him. I think because we don't know him. We talk about him, but we don't know him. we got to know who we're serving here. 
how great he is, how powerful he is. You can say what you want. The coronavirus is an act of God. Because let me tell you, not one man, not one, not, not one country anywhere in the world could cause the whole world to be infected by this. Nobody's big enough to do it. I don't care how, how much they say it came from China. China wasn't big enough to send it around the world. It's not happening. But when God steps on the scene and begins to say, you don't honor me, you look everywhere but to me, you won't give me thanks, they're running all over God's earth, living their life, living large, and they got everything they want, and, and they build this monument to themselves and all this, and God says, what about me? What about me? But somebody, since I created the world, since I made you and breathed the breath of life into you and made you a living soul, will you take the time to look up and say thank you? I give you health and strength every day. You can go to your job and work. I put food on the table. I, I put you in a place where you can live. Should I not have a thank you? A thank you. Listen to this. I want you to listen to this. When God sent Moses to Pharaoh, because his people had been in bondage for years, literally years, 400 years to be exact, and they prayed and cried out to God for deliverance, and God heard their prayer and he delivered these people, but when he sent him to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, who is this God, who is this? Don't worry about it, Pharaoh. Just in a minute, you're going to find out. I think just in a minute, America and the world are going to find out he is still in control. Listen, many things he sent to, 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 uh, to, eat, uh, to the Egyptians, but not to his people. Listen to this. I'm going to jump around here this morning, but I'll stop and tell you what I'm talking about. And... I'm in the 11th chapter of Exodus, but I'm going to be jumping all over the place. So if you want to turn, you ain't going to find the scripture that fast anyway. <laughs> and Moses said, thus saith the Lord, um, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the, of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. But against any of, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against, against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord hath put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel, which was his people. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me. Get thee out. And all the people that follow thee, and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before, before Pharaoh. And the Lord uh, hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. God said, I'm going to show him something. He don't know who I am. Every time he says he's going to do something, I'm hard his heart. He ain't going to do it. But listen what the Lord did. He said, Speak ye to the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a, land, a lamb for a house, for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. I'm skipping over this. He goes on to say, and they shall take of the, of the blood of the lamb, which was a sacrifice offered up to God. They shall take of the blood, strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Listen to this. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token. Listen to this. Upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, the blood is over me and over you if you say. He says, so the sacrifice you offering up to me 
uh, I want you to take the blood from those sacrifices, and they have to be perfect. And I want you to put the blood spread up over the top of the door and down the doorpost. And this is what he says. He says, but when I see the blood over, he said, and oh, wait a minute. And the blood shall be a, to you for a token upon the house where you are not. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the, labor, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. God said, I'm going to take care. This is for Egypt. This ain't for me. So he says, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. He says, now... When I pass through, every firstborn is getting ready to die. Whether it be beast, children, whatever, they're all going to die. I'm going to bring the, I'm going to come through there with death at midnight. Check this out. But when he came through, every time he saw the blood, he passed over. Now the blood of Jesus has to be applied to your life for you to be saved. For us to be saved. So if I go to the Lord and say, I'm a sinner, forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, make me like you, then anything that comes on this world, you are immune to it. You don't have to be a slave to it. You don't have to run from it. You don't have to be scared of it. Because he said, when I see the blood, I'm going over you. Yes. Yes, it says, and the children of Israel went away and did what the Lord commanded. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on the throne, until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, and, uh, in the night he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. The firstborn in every house, be it your cattle, no matter what it is, I am going to slay them. Why? Because the Egyptians served false gods. The Egyptians didn't serve the true and the living God. Think about this. So now he says, now I'm going to prepare my people. God always prepares us. Don't be frightened. Don't be afraid. Because if you're serving me, what father would kill his children? I'm not going to kill my children. Do we not understand that he loves us so much? I'm not going to kill you. But I'm going to get, I'm going to get Egypt. Egypt is the world. Egypt is the people that don't honor God. Egypt is the people who won't serve him. I'm not coming after you. This thing that's going over the world, I'm bringing people's mind and attention to I am God. And I'll send something, and I'll send something through this world. Something through this world that they can't shoot. They can't run it down. They can't put something out there and say, this will take care of it. Everybody's scared from the White House down. God said, I'm going to teach everybody a lesson. I'm not worried. I, I'm, I mean, my dad is good to me. He loves me. He took care of me all this time. He's not going to stop. Then you want me as a righteous to close the church? Why? This is his house. This is where I serve him at. This is where I come to praise him. You want me to close it? If it ever was a time the church should be open, it should be now. There should be a place of refuge where people can go and know that I feel better when I went to church. When you leave from here today, if you're not a Christian, you're going to say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive my sins so that I'm protected. It's him that's going to protect you. The government can't protect you. Then he says, so what is President Trump going to do about this? President Trump is like you. He don't know. He don't know what to do. He's never seen it on this, on this life before. So there he is. What's the president going to do? He is, he's human, just like us. He's trying to do something, but at the same time, the bottom line is, I don't know what to do. So we just tell all y'all to go home and stay in. You know what's getting ready to happen? We're going to have people breaking out everywhere. You put me in the prison in my own house. See, we're used to being free to go, go and come when we, ever, we get ready and do what we want to do. We get up, we go to lunch, we go to dinner, we make plans for our life. We ain't going to church today, we're going to the park. We're going to do this, we're going to do that. God says, 
I'm going to have you scared to go to the park. I let the devil, the devil make you scared to death. The scripture said God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Nobody who's got fear got a sound mind. They're crazy. They're running everywhere looking like I don't know what. That's tragic. You don't even know him. At a time like this, I'm getting ready to preach a message. I was thinking about it this morning, real soon. You cannot build a house in the midst of a hurricane. Either you got it when the storm come or you out of it. It's simple as that. You can't build it when the, when the tornado is raging and the hurricane there. You out there with a hammer and some concrete. You're not getting ready to build a house. You either know God before the storm or you don't know him at all. Every time he came, every time he came, he said, I'm going to put a barrier between Israel and Egypt. Now, I'm getting ready to do this, but I'm going to sever this place, put it in a place where it won't come over here. How can God? You ever seen this? You go outside, and, and it's raining, and, and you drive a little bit further, ain't no rain. What, what's going on? Only God can divide up the up. Uh, up part of the place to get some rain over here and didn't give you none. <laughs> How is that? If we know who he is, if we understand the power that he is, I couldn't get scared if, if, you, if you came out from every direction and you couldn't scare me. I serve God. He's going to take care of me. He's going to take care of you if you believe it. If you believe it. Listen, if you listen to the media, they don't teach you hope. They teach you, you're scared, you better get out until two more people die. Six more people die. You run across here. Oh my God. Oh, I'd be so glad when this is over. You know what? Fear will kill you. Do you understand the power of fear? It will kill you. That's why God said, I have not given you the spirit of fear. It's destructive. It makes you depressed. It makes you run wild, crazy, all over everything. Everybody's running all over everybody. Check this out. My, some of my church people went to, went to, uh, went to Walmart yesterday. And I told you to stay home. Stay 10 feet apart. Walmart was packed. Wasn't nobody 10 feet apart. The people in there getting that food, and, and everybody's mess. That place was jam packed. How are you gonna be six feet apart? Ten feet. And Cliff said he went to his job, and they told him, everybody stay ten feet apart. Don't come up closer. He said, he said, what's going on? Ten feet. You know what? I, I mean, the virus can travel right through ten feet. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So when the virus gets over here, it says 10 feet. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, so what is the 10 feet? Then he say he goes back to work again, and they say we got to stay 20 feet apart. Check this out now. This ain't stupid. I ain't never heard stupid. We got to have a meeting. So Chris says, so how are we going to have a meeting 20 feet apart? He says, well, we're going to do a conference call. So everybody's in the same room having a meeting 20 feet apart, but we're on the phone. And you know, you're on the phone. What did you leave on the phone? Is the virus on the phone? It's a possibility. And they just wash. I mean, I always wash my hands, but I ain't going to wash it no more than I always wash it. What's the biggie? Yeah. I said, this stuff is insane. We got to set 20 feet apart. Now, after a while, then they done cut it down where so many come in the morning. And the rest of y'all come in noontime. So we got to stay 20 feet apart. Listen to that if you want to. There ain't nothing in this Bible tell me to stay 10 feet apart from nothing. 20 feet apart from nothing. If what you tell me, you can show it to me in Scripture that I should abide by that, I'm going to do it. But if it ain't in this book, I'm not doing it. Because this is the word of God. This is positive. 
This is power. This is, gives me strength to be to stand tall, not to fear, not to be afraid. Check this out. Uh, we think about, well, here's what they say. If you haven't got it, treat it like you have it. Is that stupid? The scripture says, so a man think in his heart, so is he. So if I think I got the virus, I got the virus. So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I ain't thinking I got Jack. Think, you, think, you think you got it. That's totally against scripture. Totally against it, no. I ain't thinking nothing. I ain't got it. You, I mean, it's like you coming here, I say, I got your cold. Keep on thinking that. And check this out. Everybody sneezes and coughs at some point in time in your life. Now if you sneeze, you yes, you sneeze? Yes. A whole human race sneezes. From a child, we were kids, we were This is not new. Cough. Get back. Don't cough. Don't run a, a low grade temperature. Oh, that's it. That's it. One lady was online and said, they diagnosed me with it, but I never had a fever or anything. So, what is this? They got the president scared, getting ready to check him again. They got Vice President Pence, they're checking him again. Because one of the people in their office has been tested positive. Have you ever thought about, you might test me positive and I really be negative? They operate on people and take off one leg for the other one. Supposed to operate and take off the right leg, but you got your left leg cut off. You, you come too, you said, where's my other leg? Oh, we cut it off, that was the good leg. Man is not infallible, he can make mistakes. No, no, think about it, listen to this. He said, Moses said, listen to this, this, I couldn't have lived in that day. The things that God done to them was phenomenal. He said, the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that, that the hell has left. He said, and Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land of, of that day and, uh, and all that night. And when it was morning, the east Wind brought the locusts in. Who wants to be inundated with locusts? Bugs, period, give me the. F I'm, I'm more likely to get a little nervous with, with a bee flying around my head than the virus. Yes. And the locusts went up all over the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they before them. There was no such locusts as they, as they were looking at. Neither after them shall be such. For well, they covered the face of the whole earth. How do you get that many locusts to cover the whole earth? Only God could do that. So it covered the whole earth so that the, so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left. And, th and there remained not any green thing in the trees or, in the, her or, or, or in, the, in the herbs of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. The Lord said unto Moses, but I'm not going to cause that to happen to my people. Where they dwell, no locusts are going to be there. Okay, no locusts are going to be in my place. Honey, if I wasn't saved, I'd be hopping over to getting saved real quick. Let me hop over to y'all's side. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? If I'm on the Lord's side, what am I doing running? I'm the winner. I'm the winner. This ain't like getting over here on somebody's side that might make it or might get through a mic. No, no, ain't no mic. God's going to win this thing. Yes. They, she sang the song. I said, tell us sing that song. Where do I go to? When I, when I don't have no place else to go, where do I run? I run to the rock. What is the rock? The church. He said, upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell can never prevail against it. Can't prevail. Can't prevail. Running around scared. These preachers, these big mega preachers, 
running like scared fat rats. They've been telling you all this stuff about what God to do and God to do that. So when we get your money, God to do this, and God to do that. And then when the storm comes, what do they do? They run. Well, what you think the sheep gonna do? They gonna follow you. I turned on Jimmy Swaggers this morning. Uh, ain't nobody in the choir. It ain't dawned on me yet. I said, where's all the choir people? It finally dawned on me. He says this, bring your tithes whether you can get here or not. Whether you can have church or not. Donnie Swagger said, bring your tithes. Well, if I'm not supposed to come out of my house, I ain't giving you jack. I can't come to church. If you let me in church, you'll have the tithes. I'll put them in the offering place. you telling me not to do that. Well, forget you. You ain't getting no tithes. I can't have no service. I can't worship. I can't praise God. Listen. If you never know nothing else, you better know this. Listen. He said, uh, God said, and the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is in the children of Israel. None of their cattle died. Nothing died. Nobody but God can separate some. Curse this over here and bless this over there. Thank God I'm a blessed girl. I'm a blessed girl. <laughs> and he sent diseases that infested every animal they had. All of them died. So you have cattle and whatever, that's money. All of it died. But he said, I'm going to sever this. Here, here's a line here. This is my people. None of their cattle has to die. They're going to keep on eating steaks. They're going to keep on having their meat. Everybody else, everybody else over here, I don't know what they're going to eat, but I know we got some steak. Oh, boy, this is, this, you got to understand. He sent frogs on the earth. Two frogs, you. I remember being given a frog leg on time to eat. And I didn't know it was a frog. But for some gut reason, I kept feeling like, what is this? My auntie had cooked it and said, here, eat this. I said, what is it? I always like to know what I'm eating. She said, Rose, just eat it. It's good. I said, oh, what is it? She tells me after I'm done, you just ate frog. I said, you kidding me? Frog legs? The thing that's hopping them around, I'm eating it? Boy, I was uptight. I'd have never ate that frog leg. There is no way I can picture in my mind this thing hopping around in my mouth. A leg from a frog? No. He sent frogs all over the land. He said, they shall come on bo both on thee and thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up. Only God can stretch out a stick and make frogs come up out the, out the water. He said, Aaron stretched it out, and the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land too. I thought that was real stupid. So, so they magicians, they want to show we can bring up frogs too. Well, you a fool. They coming to be all over your land and your house and everything else. Why you, at, why you going to raise your thing up and get a frog? Ain't that stupid? He says, then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let your people go. He said, Tomorrow, he said, Be it according to thy words, thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. There's nobody like him. And they gathered up all the nasty frogs, and the, la and the land stank. Can you imagine a bunch of dead frogs stinking? Yes. They're crawling everywhere. I can't imagine them jumping all over the land in your house everywhere. No. See? He, I'm not going to get to all of this, but there was frogs. There was darkness that covered the earth, and it was so dark, you could literally touch the darkness. Can you imagine that? So dark till you cannot see. Pitch dark, a dark like you and I do not know. Because even if we put out all the lights in this building, after a while our eyes are going to adjust and you can see something. 
This is black darkness as only God could send it. Nobody could see what was going on. It's unbelievable. But I'm going to sever this with my people. On this side, they're going to have daylight. They're going to have sunshine, but y'all going to live in total darkness. Now, let me tell you something. What you need to do is make a commitment to God. If I make my, put my life in his hand, I don't have to worry about all this other stuff. If I just make my mind, I'm going to be a Christian and serve God, not just because we're in a, a, a time of crisis, but because that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do. If you get him, you won't be afraid. I can still pray. I'm not looking around thinking, you know, I don't know. And why? Paula Tisha has no power. <laughs> Why is toilet tissue? Why is everybody buying toilet tissue? I'm trying to understand toilet tissue? They didn't say it causes diarrhea. And go, that's, how, that's what the devil do to people. He drive them crazy. You better get some toilet tissue. And, but you never stop and ask yourself, what, what do I need toilet tissue for? I need some toilet tissue. You are running around, I need toilet tissue. People think you, you come in this church one night and say, I need some toilet tissue. People in the church would be saying, huh? I need some toilet tissue. The church, I, I mean, the store ain't got no toilet tissue. You got any toilet tissue? You want to ask, why do you need toilet tissue? Uh, Huckabee said, which I thought was a bit much, he said, he's raised in the country. <laughs> Huckabee said, ain't nothing to clean clean you better than corn cob. <laughs> Huckabee said, if you can't get toilet tissue, get a corn cob. He said, what you do is eat all the corn off the cob, but save the cob. Use that that you can use like toilet paper, but don't put it in the toilet, put it in the trash. Now, we did Sears, and, we, we did Sears and, back in the day, Sears and Roebuck, they call it. And we did J.C. Penny catalog. And we did telephone books. You going out toilet? There ain't no toilet tissue. You got um, you got a Sears on this side, J.C. Penny over here. You read. You look through there and see the things you want in the catalog. When you get through, carry your page out, wet it, rough it up a little bit, and do what you got to do. I thought y'all should have went through some hard times. If we ain't got no toilet tissue, we know how to make do. Hey, I got some toilet tissue. Just give me a serious book. And my, and my brother said the other day, he said, if they sent us down the street, said, go down the street, see if you see anybody got telephone books on their porch, get one, bring it back. That's toilet tissue. That's toilet tissue. I mean, the thing they panic over is phenomenal. Toilet paper. Paper towels. Get a rag. What did you clean with before there was paper towel? I got a rag and clean with it. I dusted with it. We done got so spoiled to having everything for everything. And God just shaking this world up, and it needs to be shook up. Now, understand, the blood on the doorpost is symbolic of Jesus' blood for us. That's what it is. But we are immune. We're immune from it. What is immunity? It's protection or exemption from something that's special, especially a penalty. This is God's hand in America and around the world if I've ever seen it. I'm not worried about it. Sometimes I turn the news on, look a little bit. I think y'all still crazy to turn it back off. I loved it with the uh, college students. Boy, they made me laugh. They were on the beach in their bikinis, and boy, they was, they was having a ball. And they say, these, these, these millennials, they're not taking this serious. The millennials say, they come up on the screen and say, Y'all always blow everything out of proportion. <laughs> and then they said, one guy came up and said, you know what? Y'all not spoiling our vacation. This is spring break. <laughs> and then he said, we're going to enjoy the moment. <laughs> like, we're not getting upset. We're going to have both. These, these young people got more sense than these old people doing all this stuff. <laughs> they said, we don't get spring break, but once a year, we're not getting ready to let you spoil it. 
they all in the, in the, in the ocean together, uh, dancing with each other, and, 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 and then they showed a big bowl, they put some drink in there, and they all drinking out the bowl and laughing and hitting each other. They weren't 10 feet apart. They're not worried about it. You walking around here crazy. I can't touch my, have your children, don't touch the grandparents. Teach them that because the grandparents uh, could easily get this. Tell, explain to them you can't hug your grandma. I got three, three grandchildren. They better not come in there talking about, I can't come close to you. I'll grab you in the nap of your neck and say, get over here. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You could always kiss me. I ain't, if I got a cold, you can kiss me. Yes. Immunity means I got enough power to resist. The blood of Jesus helps me to have the power to resist. Oh, hey, I got it going on. If, you, if you're immune from something, you're not affected or influenced by anything. You're not influenced by the media. You're not influenced by that. And they're looking scared. Everything they say is like, oh, another one died. They had a, a woman that was 103 years old. They said she had, had the, uh, uh, the coronavirus, went on through it, came out just as fine. Still living, 103. I'm trying to understand. Why do y'all just tell us all the bad stories? Tell us about the good ones. What about the man with CNN talk to him about it? He said, yeah, I got it. But Jesus came in my room and healed me. And ever since then, I don't have it no more. They, 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 they want to shut him up. Be quiet, be quiet. We don't want anybody to think there's hope. Well, anybody to believe that there's a way out. Hey, it's a way out. You just got to find it. You know what they do to supposedly protect you from having something? They vaccinate you. I've been vaccinated with the blood. I ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in good hands. This thing is having a ball. I'm having a ball with it. See? These preachers are telling people, we can't have church, but bring us your money. If you can't let me come and you be there and preach to me and we have church, you are not getting nothing. That's what y'all are telling them, I ain't bringing you nothing. Yes. Either you've been vaccinated or you haven't been. With the blood. I'm good. They vaccinate you, uh, a vaccination for the flu, and then you get symptoms of the flu. When Holy Ghost vaccinates you, glory be to God. There ain't no symptoms of sin. No, honey, you passed that. If you want to be happy right now, just say, Lord, I just want, I just want you to come into my heart. I should have had you a long time ago, but please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Make me a new person. That's all you got to do. Then from that point on, you're protected. You say it's that easy? Yes, if you mean it. If you're not doing it just because of the crisis, I'm going to serve you whether there was a crisis or not. That's what we got to do, whether there's a crisis or not. You know what? You always find out where people are in time of trouble. The scripture says, if I faint in the day of adversity, my strength is small. If I faint when things go terribly wrong, I can't, I can't say I'm a strong person. But if the storm comes and I withstand the wind and I'm still not giving in, it, reckon, it shows whether I'm strong or weak. And if I can stand the test, hey, thank God. I said this morning, I said, if you already got it, you ain't got to try to get it. I already got it. People are full of anxiety. An, ex an excessive or persistent state of anxiety uh, having a, a devastating effect on your physical and mental health. By the time this thing is over, don't be, don't be surprised you don't walk down the street a bunch of crazy folk walk around. Is it over? A lost a mind? Stone crazy. By the time this is over, I look as good as I do this morning. Nothing gonna change that. No. You don't let something 
make you get wrinkles. You, you, you know, you walk around like this. Eventually, that's not going to go back to its proper place. I never have been a person who worried a lot. I kind of took it as it came. Before I got saved, it's like, yeah. But watch the people. They turn 40 and they look like this. How old are you? You don't want to know. <laughs> all this, all this gets wrinkled all in here. Wrinkles that Nisa last night was calling my hand. She said, Mom, you ain't got one wrinkle in your face. I said, glory be to God. <laughs> glory be to God. Well, I woke up at 50 and I thought, oh my God. No, I thought before I woke up at 50, I said, oh my God, what am I going to look like at 50? I woke my husband up. I said, do you know five years from now I'll be 50? He said, yeah. I said, I can't imagine. 50? That seemed old to me then. No. 75 is old. <laughs> I can tell you, it is old. You say, what you want, honey? No. It's just a number. No, it ain't. <laughs> it's more than a number. It's a body issue. <laughs> Put the numbers over there, baby. That body is saying, I'm 75. I don't care what nobody say. You got, hey, you may have some good points that don't look 75, but I bet you we can find some points that say, are you 80? <laughs> <laughs> but you got to make the best of this situation. Hey, I got to make the best. Hey, I, I want to be happy. See, listen to this. God said, the time will come when you'll be able to discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So these preachers are showing you ain't got what you say you had. You talk all that stuff and proud and arrogant in the pulpit and tell people all this stuff and in time of storm, you run it. Y'all got to stay home. You are the shepherd. You're supposed to be looking out for my welfare. You want me to bring the money? You don't know if I got food or not. Can I? If I need something, will you give me some food from the church? I bet you in this church, if we had a member to call us and say, Sister Rose, I don't have this, I have that, we're going to them. <laughs> These people been in the church and, and paid their tithes and offering and everything else, and then in time of crisis, you, why don't you leave something on your website that says, uh, if any of our members are having a difficult time or you can't get certain things, the church has stocked some things for you, give us a call. We'll help you. Oh, no. Get your money here. Just give us that money. I ain't giving you nothing. You don't care about my welfare. You don't care about whether I live or die. You don't care whether I'm able to go to church or not because of your little cowardly butt. Sitting around there scared as a jackrabbit. You can tell the preachers who's for real and the preachers that's not. The preachers that's for real is still in the pulpit. The preachers that who for real is still got church doors open. The preachers who's serving God, you can know whether they're serving God or not. The preacher in Baton Rouge, uh, Louisiana, we, we, we left a message on his phone, but um, he said the White House and the governor came to him and said, we're going to ask you to close the church if you would. He said, I'm not closing the doors of the church. Well, he said, we pick up 600 children every Sunday that don't have food to eat, and we bring them and feed them. You think we're going to close the doors? We're not doing it. He said, I believe this is the place we come to when we're sick, when we're depressed, when things are down and out. Where do you go? You go to church. I'm going to church. Where are you going to church? What church is that? CSL? I said, what's that, Colorado Springs Fellowship? Yeah. Our attorney said, they can't make you close your church doors. He said, I can tell you that right now. They can ask you to. They can, they can give you an order, but they can't break the law. Order is not a law. So I want to obey, obey the order. The order is not a law. It cannot be enforced as such. But when the, law is, when the law is in place, you can't break that. But a lot of people don't know that. That's why we put a sign on the door. We're having church. This is the Constitution done, done something right here. It says you can't, no law can be made that would change that. 
of where these people can come together. No, don't come together. A lady asked my daughter the other day at, at, uh, at Post Annex, are y'all having church? She said, yeah, but y'all not gonna hug or shake hands, huh? <laughs> yeah? That's what church is about. We hug, we shake hands. Yes. Uh, Nisa turns on QVC every Sunday morning. And Dave, Dave who always talk about, the, the, he's so happy with food, he's just as fat as he can be. And, and he's standing over here at the end of this table, and she over here. Usually he's up on people hugging him, and he, they standing this one far apart. And then he got the wipes out. Keep wiping your hands, people. You're going to wipe that skin right off your hands. No. <laughs> If that happens in the church, we're in trouble. If we are scared to touch our brother or sister, we are in trouble. What are you going to do? If they don't lift this thing of saying, don't come out of your house, people are going to come out through windows, doors, his ceilings, and everything. They're gonna, they can't take the pressure. That's pressure. I want to I wanna go down to the park. I want to go to the store. But they getting that food, though. You can tell me don't come up, but I'm getting me some food. All the meat gone in the meat department. You can't get no pasta. Chicken, hamburger, all that's gone. If we're doing nothing else, we're going to eat till we get fat after this is over. we we'll eat everything that we can put our hands on, we're going to eat it. <laughs> Cookies gone, chips gone. By the time this is over, you're going to have... America sicker than ever. Yeah. Say, so what happened? Coronavirus. Did it make you fat? No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did this. You gotta understand. When you know him, you don't have to worry about it. Let me find this, what I need to read to you. And, uh, cause my time's running out. Oh, uh, where is it? Put it in here and say, I'm not going to miss that. I missed it. But if I get, if I get afraid, I'm going to make myself sick. Calmness. Fear will not make you calm. Fear will make you say things, do things crazy. Going down places you ain't got no business going, looking crazy, running around like a crazy rat somewhere. Listen what fear does. How it affects you mentally and physically. It weakens your immune system, so how are you gonna fight anything if you're afraid? It causes cardiovascular damage, meaning it causes damage to your heart to be afraid. What does the scripture say? Men's hearts would fail them for fear of what's coming on the earth. You can have a heart attack right through this process and never get the coronavirus, just die with a heart attack, scared to death. Gastrointestinal problems such as ulcers or irritable bowel syndrome. You don't want that. Decreases fertility. If you want to get a baby, you can't. Accelerates aging and leads to premature death. You're going to see some folks come out of this that, you say, where you been? My God. Say to somebody else, haven't they aged? You won't tell them that. What happened? Scared. Impairs the formation of long-term memories. I said, well, you can't remember some stuff. I don't know what's wrong here. I get to place I can't remember. I can't remember things like I did before. You know, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. Listen to these things. This is, this is from a medical uh, place online. Listen to this. It says, it causes damage to parts of the brain when you, when you fear. So how you gonna, how you gonna survive? You won't. Listen. Call, leaves you unable to regulate your emotion. You're all over the place. Calm down. Be calm. Why are you in a, you don't understand. That's why God didn't tell us when we were going to die, the day we were going to die. You know how crazy this world would be? This is my day to die, can you understand? I'm trying to get some things done. Everybody's like, well, I'm supposed to die today too, what do I do? Just calm down. So I ain't going to let you know the day you're going to die because you ain't going to live, you ain't going to enjoy this morning because you're dying this evening. Listen. 
causes mood, mood swings. One minute you just let it, next minute. Just, I don't, I don't know what to do. Just, just. <laughs> After a while, <laughs> <laughs> wow. It causes negatively impacts our thinking and decision making. We can't even make right decisions when we're afraid. We do crazy things. It says, leaves, leaves you feeling fatigued. Fear will wear you out. Because all day long, you're like, I gotta be careful. I don't wanna get around nobody. <laughs> Don't come here. I'm in Cliff's the other day. He stopped by a place to get him a sandwich. He said he opened the door. Don't come in here. <laughs> we'll bring it to the door. Don't come in here. My son, he goes, my grandson goes to Chipotle every, every Sunday, Saturday, or Wednesday, whatever. He does three times a week. They go in there. All silverware is gone. Tables and chairs pushed upside the wall, meaning you don't sit down here, get it, and get out. <laughs> Where you used to can say if you want to take a seat, you can take a seat. Not now. That's, that's going to make you tired. Leads to clinical depression. What's wrong with you? Shades pulled down. Lights out. Open the door. Is anybody in here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't talk right now, dude. I can't take it. In the dark. Can't find your way to the bathroom in the dark. After a while, you be going to the bathroom in the chair you sitting in. Causes hormonal imbalance. Hormones do a lot to control our, our body, our, 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 uh, our emotions. Disrupts your sleep. I can't go to sleep. Just sitting and looking at everything. I didn't sleep all night. Why? Scared. I was just thinking, suppose this happened. I told, uh, I told somebody this morning, I said, get off the if boat. What about what if? What if? What if? We're thinking about what if. What if it don't? Why are you there? What if? Everybody in my family died. Leaves you unable to sleep. You can't sleep. Fear won't do it. Causes eating disorders. Nine times out of ten, you ain't going to starve. You're going to eat yourself to death. <laughs> the next bag of chips, to, to give me some more cookies. Got any more ice cream left in there? Got some of that cake? <laughs> Causes and intensifies headaches. My head's killing me. Got a headache. You know what they said? People that have migraine headaches eventually have a stroke. My head's killing me. What's wrong? I don't know. I got this terrible headache. Okay, keep it if you want to. Causes and intensifies muscle and body aches. You start aching all over, muscles hurting, everything. What's wrong? Scared. By the time this is over, you got heart damage. Your immune system ain't working. You done got older. You died prematurely before time. You're a moody person now. You don't think right no more. You're tired. You're picking out still. When ain't nothing going on, you're still picking out. Your muscles still hurting. What's wrong with them? Coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Causes asthma. Leaves you unable to have loving feelings. Get away! I, I don't want to be hugging anybody. You might die tomorrow. I don't want to hug. No, please. Please give me a break. Well, honey, I'm just here for you. I don't want you. You don't need to hug me on anything like that, huh? You never know. You're going to be here today and go on tomorrow. I won't have no hugs next week. Stupid. Leaves you feeling helpless and powerless. Causes obsessive compulsive thoughts. What you thinking? I can't even tell you. 
causes paranoia. You know what that is, I got it down here. A mental condition characterized by delusion. There's a train, there's, there's, there's a train coming here. You see the train? No, ain't no train. Seeing things that ain't there. Is somebody coming in the house? No, ain't nobody coming. What was that noise? <laughs> I feel for you. I feel for you. Unwarranted jealousy or exaggerated self-importance. You feel like you're important and everything, and nothing's going to work if you don't get it done. Typically elaborated into an organized system. It may be an aspect of chronic personality disorder, of drug abuse. So I got to have a pill. Give me a pill. I need an upper and I need a downer. I need a sideways, I need a bit over, I need one to make me lay down, one to sit up, one to talk. Rubs, robs you out of your sense of humor. You don't laugh about nothing. <laughs> you see that? I don't think anything's funny right now. Do you, do you understand we could be dead tomorrow? I mean, what's funny? What's funny? There's a lot, a lot of funny things going on. I'm still laughing at home. I turn on my TV and say, boy, y'all crazy. <laughs> I feel just like them college students. Y'all, y'all, y'all out there. I ain't even a college student. I'm just as happy and as content. I'm not gonna come out of this worse. I'm coming out better. Yes. Fear calls you to break out in hives. Irrational. I can't stop this. Fear! You start looking for appeals. I can't stop itching. If you calm down, all that scratching for nothing. Got yourself bleeding in spots. Looking for the next thing you can put on there. And after all, your back is itching. Your hip, your leg. Just all over the place. Ain't nothing worse than to get an itch and it starts traveling. Nothing worse than that. Then it causes drug and alcohol abuse. Because I need something to get me out of this. Can you get me a beer? Dad, you don't need a beer. You need God. You have God, you'll feel good. You won't be high. Walking around like this, say, hey, how you doing? Fine <laughs> right now. Feeling pretty good. What did you have? Took a couple of pills. They put you on a high. You <laughs> feel better. <laughs> well, if they get too drunk, they start laughing. You see, some people get drunk and they get quiet. Some people just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's funny? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Your hair is funny. <laughs> Your ears may be funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope you find God. I hope you say, God, come to me. Be laughing about everything, or else you ain't laughing about nothing. Please, musicians and singers, tell yourself, if you ain't got God in your life this morning, come on, get him in here. That's real quick. You can do that just by saying, Lord, I'm sorry for the sin I committed against you and against your kingdom. I ask you to come into my heart. I'm not on your side. I need to be on your side. You need to be on my side. You can have it. You can have it. Don't go out of this building scared to death. Go outside and somebody drop dead in front of your car. Is that coronavirus? <laughs> Every time somebody dies, it's not corona. I'm going to talk on this Mr. Corona and Mrs. Corona. Did they come yet? That's how scared you are. It's wasting your time. Start living, baby. Life's too short to die scared. It's too short. I just want to be happy. You know, most people tell you, I just want to be happy. Until this pass over, it can take every ounce of little happiness you thought you had. I hope you'll leave today feeling better and that, hey, 
I'm having a ball. I was having one before Miss Corona. I'm gonna have it while she hang around. You're not getting me. You know who I am? Yes. I gotta be able to move forward and do what I need to do. Life goes on. Are you gonna go on with it or are you gonna get left behind? Think about it. You gotta get it together. What are you gonna sing? I'll go to the rock. What am I gonna run to? Run to the rock of my salvation. It ain't that. Listen to the song. Who do I talk to? Nobody will listen to you. When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock. I know he's able, I go to the rock. But where do I go? Where do I go? When there's nobody else to turn to, who do I talk to? Who do I talk to? When nobody wants to listen. Nobody will listen to you right now. Could you be quiet? I'm glad that man, he didn't make the sunshine, mm -hmm. for he may not, he may not let it shine on me, oh, see, and I'm glad, I'm glad man didn't let the raindrops fall, cause one of these days, he would forget, he forget to walk. That man, he didn't make me, oh Lord, cause he was surely, one day he surely, he surely destroyed me, oh, that's why I'm glad, yes I'm glad, oh I'm glad, I'm so, so glad, I'm glad that God made Oh 